Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. I don't know why it's not picking up on the phone. Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why is it not connected? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. This should be... Good evening, cuz. Good to see you. We're going to get started in a few minutes. Just trying to get some things set up here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There it goes. It kicked in finally. I'm trying to put it on my phone so I can monitor the sound. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. We exalt you, O Lord. You are great. Your mercy endureth forever. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Why is thing going on on me? Hope you have had a great Christmas and a beautiful day. God is good. Truly, his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to open up in prayer in just a moment. I'm looking up a scripture at, at this time. Mark chapter 9. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We honor you, King Jesus. We bless your name. You are great. You are merciful. You're sovereign. You're holy. You are awesome. You are just. Bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Well, let's open up in prayer. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Those of you who are already on the line, today has been a wonderful day. The Lord is good. He keeps on blessing us, keep on making a way for us. We just got to keep on giving him what he's just do him, the glory and the honor. For well, he's worthy of it all. And when you know that God is in control, no matter what's going on in your life, we still need to learn how to give him praise. One thing the Bible says, Philippians 4 and 4, it says rejoice in the Lord Always, again, I say rejoice. And one of the things we can also come to a conclusion that doesn't matter what we encounter or engage in this life, God still gets the glory. We still can rejoice in the Lord, the good, the bad, 
disturbing moments, the troubles, the trials, the things we're faced with, we still can praise God because he's worthy of it all. And when you have a relationship with the Lord, it doesn't matter what people think about you. You may be having the worst day of your life, but yet God is still in control, revealing himself to you in a way to remind you that he's still working things out in your behalf. And that's good news. God bless you, Anthony. That's good news to know that God is still working behind the scenes in our life to perfect the thing that concerns us. No matter what we go through in this life, true enough, this has been a, a very tumultuous year. We're coming toward the end of the year, 2020, about to engage into 2021. Many people have lost their lives. Many, many things have taken place. People lost their jobs, homes, and cars, things that people rely on the most have been stripped away from them because of this pandemic that has violated our year. But those who know that God, the word says shall do, be strong and do exploits because we know that God does supernatural things through our lives. No matter what it is we're faced with in this life, he promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And if he promised to do just that, guess what? It's a guarantee. He will continue to take care of you and provide for you everything you have need of. So let's open up in prayer. Then we'll get into the word tonight. I'm excited because th this is a really great lesson dealing with the deaf and dumb spirit. You know, the enemy is, comes in many different forms and many types of attacks and many ways to distract us even distort our mentality to cause us to be in a place of misery and despair. But nevertheless, Jesus Christ has conquered him when he died on the cross and rose from the dead. He brought us the victory over everything the enemy thought would take us out. The enemy thought he has you. The enemy thought he can take away your joy. The enemy thought he can take away your peace. He thought he can take away your love. He thought he can take away your contentment. That's in God. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. That's good news. So even throughout this year, the way things have gone, we still have a blessed hope that's in the Lord. Jeremiah puts it this way. He says, this one thing I recall to mind, that there is hope in the Lord. And that his mercies are new every morning. His compassions does not cease. Great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. And he promises to always be there every time we call upon that great name, Jesus. So, Lord God, tonight we thank you for another opportunity to break the bread of life. We ask, oh God, that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation from the Logos and give us a rhema word. A word that's in season, a word that's in time, and a word that's on time that will help change our thinking change our attitudes, change our character, that everything about us would line up with your word because it's about you being glorified. We ask you, Lord, tonight to forgive us for our sins and our transgressions, to wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Because we know, God, without you, we can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. And I thank you, Lord God, for bringing us through this year, even through the Bible studies, oh God. You have been faithful. Even when we fail to be faithful, God, you remain faithful to keep on feeding us like a shepherd feeds his flock. And tonight, oh God, allow us to open up our hearts to receive from you, oh God, the engrafted word of the Lord that will help strengthen, that will encourage, that will edify that will build us up in our faith to trust you all the more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, son. Good to see you here tonight. You know one thing about God. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. It's your attitude when it comes. What attitude do you have when the enemy attacks you? Do you have the attitude of Christ? Or do you get back into your soulish realm, your fleshly realm, and have the attitude of the world with a negative response? 
to things that are happening in your life. And when you realize that God is in control of your life, it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. You can speak to those things. Mark 11, chapter verse 22. And Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. This has been a triumphant year, sure enough, but it also was a testing year to see where your faith really lies at. Were you depending on God or depending on your resources? The enemy wants us to be deaf to the voice of the Lord. He wants to be dumb when we don't recognize when God is moving in our behalf. He wants us to be blinded to the things that God is doing in our lives to perfect us, to strengthen us, to help us to keep moving forward towards our destiny, towards our purpose, toward his divine plan he has for your life. The Lord knows the beginning and the ending of your life. And the enemy knows if I can distract you, I can stop you from achieving or accomplishing everything God has for you. That business, that house, that, that new car, uh, uh, dreams and that God has given you that you've been praying about for a long time. The enemy don't want you to see those things come to pass in your life. So he puts a deaf and dumb spirit on you to keep you from receiving it. You go to Mark chapter 9 is our key verse for tonight. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. It says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. Then he goes on and says, verse 18, And wheresoever he taketh him, he tarries him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. He was having a seizure. And he asked his father, how long is it since ago this came unto him? And he said, of a child. So this deaf and dumb spirit is, a, is activates through the, through the reaction of seizures. It attacks the brain neurosystem and caused the body to begin to shut down so it caused seizures so the young man was foaming at his mouth and he falling on the ground pining away means he's he's starting to lose life life is coming out of him he's he's stripping he's like slipping away his life about to be sucked out into death and it says he gnashes with his teeth i mean grinding your teeth then it goes on and says and he asked the father, how long it is ago since this came unto him? And he said, of course, of child. And often it has, he said, oft, oft times it has cast him into, into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. You know why I love this story? That the most significant thing about this story is you have unbelievers coming to Jesus, bringing their child, an unbeliever bringing their child to Jesus, first took it to the disciples, expecting them to do what Jesus can do, cast out this spirit. But then you have an unbelieving a father who speaks into this, this, speaks to Jesus and says, this child been having this reaction ever since the child. You know, so he says, well, you know what? Help us and have compassion on us. I love it because when you have a desperation cry, God hears you, God answers you, and he delivers you. So as he cried out, he said straightway, the father of the child cried out, and he said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help mine unbelief. But before this, verse 23, he says, And Jesus said to him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. 
You must have such a stern, strong, stable faith in God to where it doesn't matter what the devil brings your way. It's not going to distract you. It's not going to distort you. It's not going to cause you to fall into unbelief. But you're going to continue to stand on God's word and believe what God has spoken to you to do. God bless you, Cornell. So, I mean, it's so important that we have our faith anchored in the Lord because when the enemy comes to test you, where is your belief system? Are you trusting and believing in the Lord? Or are you trusting in yourself? And this is the story of a young man being attacked by a demonic spirit. This deaf and dumb spirit was a demonic spirit. And we've been dealing with strongholds for the last eight months. This stronghold is a very strong demonic spirit that attaches itself to whoever has a weak faith. And the enemy knows that I can attack you in a way to get you to stop trusting and believing in the Lord. I can destroy you. I can destroy everything about you and you'll never arise to the occasion God has created you. So he knows, God bless you, Sister Bell. He knows that if I can stop you from standing on God's word, I can put doubt in your mind and in your heart and you'll doubt the promises God has for you. I have such great faith in God. So if I believe a thing so so deep in my heart, I, I know it's going to happen. It happens. Nine times out of ten, every, ten I, every time I believe God for a certain thing in my life, it comes to pass. So then it goes on in verse uh, 25. And when Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit and said to him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more, and enter no more into him. What Jesus did, because the news traveled to the crowd, he didn't want to make a spectator of himself or what he was doing. So he immediately spoke to that spirit and said, You foul spirit, come out of him. We have to have such bold faith in God. That no matter what the enemy attacks you with, you can speak to that thing with confidence. That when God gives you a word, you're going to stand in that word. You're going to believe that word. You're going to devour that word. You're going to meditate on that word. You're going to keep speaking that word to yourself until you believe that word for yourself. When you get that word in you, that word will begin to manifest. And the enemy that's attacking you will begin to fall back from you. Just like being in the army. When we was going through a, a, a bivouac and the training in the field, they set us in position. We had set up our, our tents and everything in certain places, and then when we had to go out into certain areas of the field, we'd get into a, a, a pit, and we'd stay there as if we're uh, looking for our enemy, expecting the enemy to come. So we had some of the soldiers in our, in our squadron uh, pretend to be the enemy and then we had some that was set to be the opposing force so we would get into a place where we strategically set up camp looking and expecting the enemy so we can destroy the enemy but how many times as a believer you put yourself in a vulnerable position where you don't even expect the enemy to come so when the enemy comes you fall into his, his entrapment into his, his, his place of, of despair his place of hopelessness and then he takes away your joy and your excitement about God and he gives you misery. Then you get into a place where you start doubting God that I don't know why God keeps letting the same stuff happen to me. Like every year it's like the same thing keeps coming around. It keeps happening to me over and over and over. That's a spirit. You're dealing with an unclean spirit. Unclean spirits will continue to pop its head up like weeds in, in your grass. It'll pop itself up and it keep on coming to attack you because it don't want you to see what God sees and do what God wants you to do. So last week we talked about in our book, we talked about um, children can be harassed by demons. And then we talked about the spiritual covering. There's a spiritual covering that we talked about. It's the anointing. You must cover your children with anointing. Anoint your children uh, begin to pray over them before you send them out of your house. Even pray over yourself and cover yourself with anointing. You must be covered by the Spirit of God. If you're not walking in the Spirit of God, how can you cover somebody else 
by the Spirit of God. It's not going to work. Because you're contradicting yourself. So you got to get to the place in yourself where you begin to consecrate yourself, seek the face of God, begin to pray and fast, and ask God to cover your mind and your heart to protect you from the attacks and the wiles and the snares of the enemy. And God will do just that by his spirit. And when the spirit comes inside of you, he empowers you to keep standing and trusting and depending on God no matter what the enemy brings your way. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, God said he raised a standard or a defense against the enemy to keep him from attacking you. A lot of attacks we have in our lives is the things we open up the gateway for because of negativity. Negativity, a negative mindset, and a negative conversation will open up the gateway of, of demonic activity coming to your life begin to strip you. And cause you to get into a spiritual place of having a seizure where you begin to pine away. Your life begins to fall apart and begin to be stripped like shreds because you allow that gateway to be open for the enemy to come in. So this is another form of epilepsy. And epilepsy is seizures. So in the book it says, I remember a young lady in Costa Rica who had a to 70 epileptic, epileptic attacks a day. On one occasion, her husband came home just in time to keep her from feeding poison to her baby, thinking she was, it was milk. And after a period of faithfully hearing the word, her attack dwindled down nothing to nothing, and she was free. Another girl in the same crusade would fall into a spell of some kind whenever we started praying for the sick and awaken as soon as we were done. On, on one Sunday morning, I felt led of the Lord to bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. And I told the people she would never have an attack again as long as she continued hearing the word of God. Isn't that amazing? Two occasions. One lady fell, in, fell into attack of epilepsy and she's about to feed her baby poison. Another person was in church, was sick, and then falling asleep. And then... She, Immediately will wake up after the end of the prayer. And the man of God spoke a word. And command that spirit in the name of Jesus to no longer attack this individual. And she was set free. You can be free from anything you believe God you can be free from. The problem comes in when we don't want to be free from certain things. Some sins in our lives we're comfortable with it. God bless you brother Willie. Some sins in our lives, we're comfortable with being in those things. So when God tried to deliver you, we put up resistance. We oppose God because I don't want to let go of what's going on in my life because I'm comfortable doing my thing. Anytime God wants to disrupt your apple cart and turn it over and begin to strip you of the things that's not of him, the demonic forces begin to rise up on the inside of you and fight against God. It says, on a number of occasions, before coming to the crusade, seven demons appeared to her, telling her to kill her nephew. The whole neighborhood could hear screams when this would happen. But when she was delivered, she was delivered instantly. Now, another attribute of this deaf and dumb spirit is suicidal. Is suicidal. And so another symptom of the strong man is suicidal tendencies. And when the man said it cast him into the fires and into the waters to destroy him. This was an indication of suicide. The enemy tried to get him to kill himself. Many times the enemy plays on your psyche, which is your mind. And he attacks your mind. And it gets you to the place of vulnerability where you feel worthless, you feel inadequate, you feel like God don't care about you, feel like God don't need you, I don't, I don't know enough about God, I haven't prayed enough about God, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with God. So the enemy strips you of your belief system and your power because you give into the thoughts. The Bible tells where to cast down every imagination. And every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you don't recognize the spirit when it comes, 
The enemy comes in a subtle way, just like in the Garden of Eden. We talked about that a few weeks ago. He'll come in in a subtle way and appear to be like God in your life. And when he comes in, he'll bring the thing that he knows is going to captivate your attention. And when he gets your attention, he'll feed you the bait. Satan loves to bait God's people. And what I mean by baiting he put some things just like when you're trying to trap a deer or an animal in a cage. You'll you put something down to lure that, that animal to the cage that you're trying to trap them in. The enemy does the same thing. He has a spiritual cage and he got some bait, which is the things that, that you love and you desire the most. And he puts those things in a trail to draw you closer and closer to the entrapment. And once he gets you to that place, he got you. Suicide can result from a number of factors. In some cases, a lying spirit or a spirit of heaviness or a combination of the two would tell the victim that life isn't worth living. Isn't that something? God bless you, auntie. The enemy knows if I can get you to feel like I don't need God. I can fix my own problem. I can do things my way and get God's approval. That's a lie from the devil. A lying spirit, we talked about that a few months ago. A lying spirit will appear and look and sound like truth, but all the time it's a lie. Just like Satan did with Eve in the garden. He tricked her with half truth and a lie, which became a whole lie. And the enemy does the same thing today. He entraps you with lies. If I can lure your attention to be captivated on what I'm talking about, I can get you to where, just like a, a cobra. A cobra, when it's about to strike his victim, it, it gazes his eyes upon that victim till he puts him in a trance. And that cobra will get your attention and then strike you. The enemy does the same thing with us believers. He gets us to the place where he gets us to gaze upon his lies and his details and all the stuff that we love the most that's not of God. To gaze upon those things to it captivates our attention. So when God tries to guide you back to truth, you find yourself struggling. It becomes a tug of war. Well, I'm trying to follow God, but every time I try to follow God, Something happens to cause me to slip off the track and I fall back into the same lustful desires of temptation and sin. So they said there did it said there then is this kind of spirit that tries to forcibly kill the victim. So the enemy tries to kill you. Because his MO is what? To kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus made it clear in John 10 10. Of course, we can be certain, however, when a suicide is attempted, it is the handiwork, handiwork of the satanic strongman behind the killing is the occupation of the destroyer. The enemy has an occupation. You have a job as a believer, and your job is to go and make disciples of men, to proclaim the gospel truth. That's your job. Satan has a job, and he made it clear, John 10, 10, his handiwork. His job is to be the destroyer, to lure you away from Christ, to get you back to the place where you don't follow the Lord. So when time comes, when Christ comes again, your end will be the lake of fire. He knows if I can destroy your belief system, stop you from trusting and depending on God, I can take you to the pit of hell with me. Because he knows his end is a lake of fire. Luke added a detail to this account that is important. It said, as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child. It appears that after the demon was cast out, it was very necessary for Jesus to heal the boy because of the violence done by the boy by the demon. Isn't that something? The demon, after Jesus commanded the spirit to come out, said, I'm going to give him one more blow. I'm going to knock him down. I'm going to go try another time, not try another chance to take his life. So he fell to the ground. I mean, he fell to the ground. He began to tear him. Another is stripping him, beating him, stripping him. And it says violent tendencies. So the enemy knows 
if I can get you to a place, I can rip you to pieces. I can take away your sanity. I can take away your trust. I can take away your dependence on God. I can take away your hope. I can take away your joy. I can take away your endurance, your tolerance. I can just take everything that you rely on and put you back into the pit of despair to where you won't even call on God when you find yourself miserable. The enemy knows if I can stop you from crying out, then God can help you. One thing about God, God is so unique in his love for his children. He says, before you utter a word from your mouth, I heard you. That's good news. That's shouting news. To know that when I'm at a place of despair and hopelessness, and I don't feel like I have the strength to even utter a word out of my mouth, God says, I heard you. As a believer, God knows you are his child. God knows what you need in the time you need it, but he wants you to have faith enough to believe that even in the moment where you don't feel like you can make it, you can make it. So we got to get to the place where we recognize the Spirit of God is at work in our lives. There's another uh, attribute of this Spirit. It's called blind and dumb. Another instance where specifically recorded that the demon was cause of a similar problem found in Matthew chapter 12. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to turn to here. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Matthew chapter 12. Hallelujah. Verse 22. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, it says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him in so much that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. That's powerful. That is powerful. Blind and dumb. So this spirit was making you mute when you can't speak, then also make you blind when you can't see. So Jesus, being who he is, has the power, all power in his hand, can deliver you from any situation you find yourself entrapped in. So whatever the enemy is trying to blind you with, God says, I can do it. I can bring you out. I can deliver you. I can set you free. Why? Because you have faith that I can do it. For with God, all things are possible to him that believes. So if you believe I can do it, it's going to be done for you. That's the word of God. But we got to get to the place where we believe that without a shadow of a doubt, that hope against hope, that when God said to Abraham, he's going to be the father of many nations, and from his loins, kings going to come from him. Not only that, but all the kingdoms of the world will be blessed. So when God spoke the word to Abraham, he had hope against hope. So in other words, there was no place to even have doubt to come in there. So without that doubt, he was able to believe God that what God spoke, he was able to perform it. We got to get to that place in ourselves. We believe God's word that he can perform what he promises. During some serve, special services in Portland, Oregon, this is uh, in the story, so I prayed for a lady who had suffered from an eye damage. The doctor had implanted some kind of synthetic material in her eye to alleviate the problem and at the same time correct the vision. It had torn loose and the lady was in need of more surgery to correct the difficulty. I bound the dumb and deaf spirit that was oppressing her in the name of Jesus and then I asked the lady if she wanted God to heal what was there or create a new part of her eye. Oh, if God is going to do it, she exclaimed, I would rather have a new part, not just a repair job. I like that. That's great faith. So the man prayed, Father, we asking you to create in her eyeball the part that is defective and loose the spirit of life in this eye. Then the woman cried out, Oh, I can see. It's becoming clearer all the time. I can see the synthetic pieces dissolving and now it's gone and I can see perfectly. That's a powerful testimony. That lets you know there is nothing too hard for God. 
no matter what it is, you might have your finger cut off. If God wants you to grow a finger back, he can do that. If God wants your ear to grow back, he can do that. Why? Because he created you for his glory. You're his creation. You're everything God has wanted you to be. So any part of you that's defected, God has the power to restore it. As if it never was defected. That's the God we serve. Just because we might fall off the bandwagon sometime back into a place of sinful desires and temptation, trials, and tests, God wants you to know tonight that he still loves you. He still cares about you. He's still there bringing your heart back to himself to forgive you and cleanse you and make you whole again. Because he said, any part of your life that's defected, I am God enough that I can deliver you from that thing and make you whole. Many occasions when Jesus was healing people, he would heal them and says, by your faith, you'll be made whole. Your faith has the ability to, connect, to be connected to God to what when you connect to God, God's faith mixed with your faith brings into reality the wholeness and deliverance that you need it from God. So you got to keep on believing God that he's able to do it. No matter what the enemy tells you, God is able to deliver and set you free. Another part of the deaf and dumb spirit or attribute is the mental problems. I'm sure we all know someone who deals with mental torment or mental depression or mental illness. Here's another story. So the woman in Oregon came across my path who had been declared hopeless paranoid. The doctor kept her heavily drugged to maintain a semblance of sanity. An semblance of sanity. I began sharing the scripture about healing with her each week and praying for her need. After a few weeks, the caseworker asked me to document what I was doing because they had been able to take her off the, uh, the heavy drugs. Her health, it says, her return to health and been, been so phenomenal, they wanted to, a copy of my method. So here's what's happening. This woman was heavily sedated on medication. And the man of God began to each week speak the word of healing over her. And she believed God about healing. And after a few weeks, the caseworker, that was her caseworker, wanted to find out what was he doing to help her because they, they were able to take her off the medication. They have the medication kept her sedated all the time. And so, so he, he says, and, and she returned to health and, and been so phenomenal that they want a copy of his method. So when you do extraordinary things for God, people want to know, how did that work for you? How did you do that? Where did you get that from? Because whatever you did, it worked. Just like sometimes when I pray for certain people in many different uh, uh, situations, and I have faith in God that God's going to do it. 99% people will come back to me. It may be years later and say, Pastor Emery, you prayed for me uh, 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 last year sometime. And I just want to testify to you that I was healed. Then, then I had occasion where someone, I spoke a word over someone, a prophetic word. And I said, God is going to do such a thing in their life. Two years later, somebody came back and ran across my path. And said, you know what, uh, Pastor Emery? They said, man, you be on point because the word you spoke of my life, everything happened in sequence the way you spoke it. Because I have such great faith in God that his prophetic anointing will begin to flow through my life. And when I speak a word that God tells me to speak, if your faith mixed with my faith and God's faith, it will happen in your life. It may not happen instantly. Some cases it happens right away. And in some cases, it may take some time or some years, but it will happen. I remember prophecy spoken on my own life. And every time the enemy tried to silence me with a deaf and dumb spirit to keep me from being muted from hearing God's voice and being blinded from, from walking in the purpose God has for my life, God's word prevailed. Years later, I'm still reaping the benefits of prophetic words spoken on my life over 20 years ago. I'm seeing come to pass these last few years in my life. And I tell you that when you have faith in God, whatever God's speaking to your life, believe it. 
Don't allow yourself or anybody else to speak against what God spoke to you. If you feel in your heart, God has gave you a word, a prophetic word for yourself, and someone spoke a word to your life, you stand on that word. You know that word with such an assurance and a confidence with, without allowing yourself to waver or doubt God. I guarantee that word will come to pass in your life. But you got to believe it. Goes back to having faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So another attribute is that dumb spirit. And we just spoke against that. But now we're going to talk about prayer and fasting. So Jesus on one occasion, he spoke about a person who was possessed of a devil. And the disciples couldn't deliver and he says, some things come through prayer and fasting. You got to believe God that what God spoke into your life to do is going to happen. But then you're going to have faith in God that his word will manifest. So even in our story, when Jesus spoke that word to that spirit to come out of that boy, disciples asked Jesus, why couldn't we do this? And he told them. He says, some things don't come out. Like he said in verse 29, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is the highest degree of consecration you can ever get to. And the reason I say that, because when you get into the place and the mindset of prayer, and fasting, seeking God's faith, you're shutting down yourself and everything else around you just so you can hear from God for yourself. You got to believe God that what God spoke into your life, it will come to pass. And when God spoke this word through Jesus to his disciples, he said, this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. And when you get to the place, like some habits in your life, let's say you have a gluttony spirit. You eat too much. Or you might drink too much. Like some people they have an addiction to alcohol as a believer. They're addicted. And so they can't get out of that spirit. And the more they try, it's like the worst things get. I'm going to tell you the solution. Any habit, God bless you, sis. Any habit in your life that has you in bondage. And it holds you into a spiritual prison. You need to get to the place within yourself. Get into the scriptures. Start reading Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6. Begin to find scriptures on consecration, on prayer, and seeking the face of God. And allow yourself to begin to engage and being grafted in the word of God to that word get into your heart. When the word gets into your heart, it brings conviction. And when the conviction comes, a desire begins to manifest of wanting to be set free. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes inside of you. He will give you a desire to want to be set free. And when you begin to cry out to God, do what God instructed you to do, anoint your head with oil, go into your secret closet, and when you pray in secret, God says he rewards you openly. You got to get in the word of God. And begin to seek the face of God. Because God's word has the power and the ability to bring you out of anything the enemy thinks is going to hold you in captivity. And when you begin to cry out to God, God promises, I will deliver you and set you free. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But thou, talking about you, believer, when thou prayest, when you pray, believer, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Matthew 6, 6. It says, and when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they shall be heard of their much speaking. And what he's talking about here, to overcome a deaf and dumb spirit or any other spirit the enemy attacks you with, you got to get into the place 
where you have no distractions, where you and God, you and God alone can spend time communing. When you talk to God, God talks to you. When you're hearing God's voice, not only hearing his voice, but you're taking notes and allow God to speak into your heart. And then when God begins to speak, he'll give you divine instructions of what you need to do specifically to be set free from that spirit. I'm a living witness. Because any time the enemy came against me to entrap me, I began to go into my secret closet. Your secret closet will be in your living room. Your secret closet will be in your bedroom. Your secret closet will be in your kitchen. Your secret closet will be in your basement. If wherever you begin to make your sanctuary can be your secret closet. And when you get to that place and you begin to seek the face of God, the enemy knows, now I got to leave him alone. Because now they tapped into something that's out of my territory. They tapped into the kingdom. When you tap into the kingdom, you release the kingdom authority to begin to engage in your heart, to be rooted and grounded in you and begin to manifest through your life. And the kingdom authority will put the enemy to a flight every single time. There is no doubt that we must live close to the Lord at all times when we are involved in this kind of ministry. If our bodies are dominating us so that we cannot hear the voice of the Spirit when He speaks to us, we should discipline our bodies by going without food so they will learn to be quiet in God when God speaks. And our prayer lives must be kept current at all time. You got to get to the place when you discipline your body. That's going to be the key benefactor of getting to the place of prayer and fasting is discipline. Self-discipline. Turn off the television. Turn off the radio. Turn off the computers. Get off the cell phone. Turn the phone off. Because you don't want anything to hinder you when God speaks to you. But do not allow Satan to bro, it's a bro beat you by saying that because you have not fasted 40 days, you should not have the power to command him to leave you in the name of Jesus. You have the power. When you get to the place and you tap into kingdom authority, you have the power to command the devil to loose you in the area of your life that's been a challenge and God will set you free. We are not doing it in our own name or our own power, but we're doing this in the name and the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus promised, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So take your liberty in the name of Jesus and do the wonder and exploits that Jesus expects us to do. Go out and do some supernatural things by allowing the Spirit of God to use you to lay hands on the sick and they recover. To speak to spirits in people's lives that's not of God and they come out. Because you have that power. We all have that power in us. Read Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19 tells you, Jesus said, Behold, I give you power, tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy. And he said that nothing by any means shall hurt you. Luke 10, 19. Then he said, verse 20, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your name is written in heaven. Your name, my name, our name is written in heaven. And we got to get to the place where we recognize that we're kingdom people. We have kingdom authority and we operate in kingdom mindedness. And when you have the mind stayed on Jesus, that's when the words of thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. When your mind is stayed on the Lord, the Lord promises that I will deliver you, I will heal you, I will set you free, I will bring you out of whatever trouble you find yourself entrapped in. Doesn't matter what it is you're going through in your life today, God promises to bring you out. There's a song that was produced 
uh, about over 10 years ago, the Lord will bring you out. The Lord will bring you out. No matter what the problem, the Lord will bring you out. The Lord will bring you out. God will bring you out. No matter what it is you're going through. If you don't have doubt that God can do it, God promises he will do it. So I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Thank you, Father, that your word is truth. We can count on the confirmation of your word at all times as we believe and act upon it. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind your dumb and deaf spirit, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, which tells me, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I demand you stop harassing me this instance. Leave me and never return, you foul spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me freedom from all the forces of the enemy. I lose the Holy Spirit in my life, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, which states, Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I lose the resurrection life and the gift of healing to do a complete work in my body, my soul, and my mind. And I appropriate your victory over Satan in every area of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I guarantee the stronghold is breaking. The chains and the shackles is falling off. Because this word, a prayer we just prayed, this declaration, is a prayer from the Spirit of God that's going to set you free. from no, water, no matter what it is that holds you in captivity. So next week, in the new year, we're going to talk about the spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage from Romans chapter 18, verse 15. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. And it's going to be the spirit of bondage. But I, I do thank everyone for tuning in tonight. But if I, we're going to do as we always do each week. If you don't know the Lord and Jesus as your Savior, I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me of my sins. And to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Now, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And that with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over you, one sinner who turned your life over to the Lord. And I guarantee, anytime you call on the Lord... He will answer you and deliver you and set you free. David said in one of the Psalms, he said, This poor man crying to the Lord, he heard me delivering from all my fears. God will hear you and he will deliver you. And then again, another prayer we pray each week. If you are a believer, a child of God, and you've been walked away into bondage, back into the habits and addictions, and you slipped away back into sin, would you repeat after me, Heavenly Father? Come into my heart. Forgive me, Lord God, for straying away from your truth. Now bring me back to your word, God, that I am restored, I am revived, I am refreshed by the Holy Spirit, that I can walk and live in the freedom that you have given to me through your son Jesus. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Now now, allow the Holy Spirit to come into my heart to release the power of the anointing that I will walk by faith and not by sight into the new life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. I thank you all for tuning in tonight. I pray that you all have a safe and a wonderful new year. Our church, we're going to be having a watch night. If you're in our area, we invite you to come and join us at 10 o'clock. We're going to be joining Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church. I'm the assistant pastor there. My pastor, uh, Pastor Cornell Anderson, a wonderful man of God. The God that allowed me to serve under for four years now. And I thank God for what he's doing in our lives. And I just want to encourage you. Expect something new in the new year. Expect things to change in your life in the new year. Expect God to do a greater work in your life in the new year. And I guarantee whatever it is you put yourself out to believe that God can do, watch God do it. Expect God to do it. 
and God is a God who will fulfill his word. He said he watched over his word to perform it. So whatever dreams, whatever aspirations, visions, the promises that you have in your life in the new year, forget those things right behind and press forward for the promises that God has for you and watch God bring it to pass in your life. And I guarantee your life will be fruitful and abundant in Jesus' name. Lord God, I thank you tonight for this lesson, for the hearers. I pray your word have not fallen upon deaf ears, but the church that have ears to hear your word tonight, God, will receive this word. This word will help challenge, provoke, convict, edify, change, strengthen, empower those, Father, who are weak in their faith, to grow in their faith, to be strengthened in their faith, to trust you all the more. And allow us to grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are as we seek your face continually, Lord God. No matter what the enemy brings our way, we will not bow to any other God, but we choose to serve the most high God with all of our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength. And we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Happy New Year, Auntie. I see you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Love you all. God bless you again. Anyone got any questions before we go? Anyone got any questions? If you got a question, feel free to uh, ask me a question right now and I'll try to answer it. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but these lessons have really been fruitful for my own personal life. I really enjoyed it. You know, these lessons, teaching these lessons throughout the year, the last uh, eight months of the year. I really enjoyed teaching these lessons. And I, I thank God for what he's doing, you know, in my life, you know, to help to, to help strengthen me in the areas of my life where I was weakened and torn down and broken and bruised and wounded, hurt, all that stuff. But also you can find these lessons each week on YouTube. If you don't have a Facebook, you know, if you know those who don't have a Facebook page, you'd like to share the lessons with them, uh, you can refer them to the uh, YouTube page, Charles Emery on YouTube. And they will find these same lessons on, on YouTube each week. And I thank God for the avenues of media streaming that we have because it's reaching the world. And I thank God that these lessons are reaching the world, not just in, in Wisconsin, but all over the world. Our, our, our lessons and live streams are going because God provided this opportunity for us to reach people with the gospel. And that's the mission for every born again believer is to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee when you do what God wants you to do, God don't mind opening up the windows of heaven and pull you out blessings. You don't have enough room to receive. Anything that you're seeking God for, he will do it. He would do it, you know, because we trust in him and we believe in him without a shadow of a doubt. And God will be right on. That's right. Right on time. He'll be right on time in your life. Right on time. You need a financial breakthrough. Begin to decree that thing. That's one thing I had to learn. When I first moved from Texas over a little over four years ago, I was financially struggling. And one day I was in prayer and the Lord spoke to me. He said, your struggles are going to maintain the more you keep believing it. You hear what I just said? Whatever area in your life that you're struggling with, your struggle is going to continue the more you keep believing it. And when you change your confession, and your confession lines up with what God says, God says his word, it will come down like the rain. He says, the rain come down while the earth and the snow and does not return hither. So shall my word be that coming forth from my mouth, it shall not, shall not return to me void. God will speak a word in your time of your struggles, and that word will be just what you need to hear. And before you know it, your finances are changed. The habits are changing, your lifestyle is changing, your attitude is changing, your character is changing, and everything about you begins to line up with God's word. I'm blessed and highly favored of God every day of my life. I find favor everywhere I go. You can do the same thing because you have to decree it over yourself that I have favor with God and with man. And it doesn't matter what it is, you got maybe ready to start a business next year. Believe God for that thing, that it will happen. 
and they're going to provide the right resources, the right people to connect to this vision that he's given you and begin to watch God bring that thing into fruition in your life. I'm a person of believing in vision and dreams because I believe so many different things in my life and seen it happen. Because I trusted God, had visions, and I spoke these things, wrote these things down, and watched God bring it past in my life. God is no respect of person. It doesn't matter what you're going through in your life. God will fulfill this promise for you. All you got to do is keep on trusting and do not doubt. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. So until next year, it sounds strange saying next year, but the Lord permits us next year. We'll be back on live stream again. You all stay encouraged, stay excited about Jesus, and know that God loves you, and I do too. Peace, shalom unto you, and we're, we're planning to be on again next year. Good night, everybody. Hallelujah to the Lamb.